Hey, what's up guys? Arava here and welcome back to another episode of my F1 23 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 87 today for the finale of season 5 at the Brazilian Grand Prix. And what a season it has been. Our second season with our custom-owned engine in partnership with Lamborghini. And this has been the toughest one of the two. Going up against our brand new teammate, Teo Porcher, this year. He has been exceptional. And that became abundantly clear as he started off the season with a real statement of intent from pole position to P1 to kick off the year down under at the Australian Grand Prix. We already knew he was quite a talent in previous seasons, but he had never got a car to go out there and get race win. This was his first time in a top team and he delivered immediately raw speed in no doubt. And that was in full force with not only the first race win for the first race of the season, but he then went on to get the back-to-back -back as he won in Las Vegas for round number two. A certainly ominous start to the season. But once this genius shone through on the other side of the garage to us, the entire landscape of this Formula 1 grid in season five had truly changed. No longer were McLaren and Red Bull the consistent protagonists at the top of the championship. McLaren especially really losing a lot of performance. Red Ball still able to perform in some scenarios, but a new pecking order, including Aston Martin, Audi, Lamborghini, and Mercedes, was at the forefront. And at the start of the season, you may remember also Alfa Romeo Haas, because Felipe Drogovic got Haas's one and only race win of this season in an early Abu Dhabi Grand Prix for round three. Uh, as I said, their only race win, because after this, they really did not find that former glory. They started off so strong, but clearly they did not have the budget to keep up upgrades compared to the rest of us on the grid. And they have fell away, but they still have their occasional fighting chance for good points in comparison to previous seasons. But as I said, Aston Martin was a big player in this. And their new signing Leclerc, having left Mercedes after just one season, was now enjoying his choice of jumping ship to the green machines as he won his first race with Aston Martin, powered by Honda at the Chinese Grand Prix as we returned to Shanghai. At this point, we had only managed to get some podiums. Still a win eluded us, and still Teo Porcher was gleaming from those two first race wins. He led the championship at this point and was still controlling things very comfortably, but Aston Martin was coming, and it was time for back-to-back -back wins for the team, but this time it was Yuki Tsunoda getting P. One. Sonoda obviously has been there for a little bit longer than Leclerc and the team has been built around him somewhat and maybe the win here for Yuki was the start of the end for Leclerc and Aston Martin as it became very clear soon that maybe he would be the real person leading Aston Martin with more consistency following this race. But around this point of the season though, all eyes were on that man in the middle, Teo Porcher leading the championship by quite some way. We had to answer and we did in the first Italian Grand Grand Prix of the season at Imola by taking victory on home soil for this Italian brand as we try to solidify Lamborghini status as the number one Italian team in Formula One. Ferrari obviously in this career mode have been very underwhelming for many many seasons but things were starting to brew. Ferrari were actually gaining some momentum, were gaining some pace. Mercedes as well there as you can see with George Russell getting on the podium and there would soon be a whole raft of rumours in the paddock about driver switches at the halfway point. But meanwhile at the forefront another new brand in Formula 1 Audi was taking victory at the Spanish Grand Prix. Pierre Gasly our old teammate, our old nemesis taking victory whilst we came together with him earlier in the race. Clearly tensions were still pretty high with this particular Frenchman and it would all come to a boil in the following race at the British Grand Prix. Scuderia Ferrari went on to get their first race victory in absolute ages and Max Verstappen was the one that got it for them. All really thanks due to myself and Pierre Gasly having our Verstappen Hamilton moment at Silverstone. The two of us collected each other at turn one and it was a DNF for Pierre Gasly and for us major major damage that saw us way down the order and off the back of this dramatic race we had an unreal 
mid-season driver market madness as Leclerc left Aston Martin, only having left Mercedes half a season ago, to rejoin the Silver Arrows as George Russell would see the success of Ferrari and go, yep, that's a little bit of me, as he partnered Max Verstappen for the Scuderia for the remainder of the season. Joe Guan, you would fill in the spot for Aston Martin, but through all of it, through all the noise, I focused in and won the Austrian Grand Prix in a bit of a weird fashion, you know, because Red Bull were leading and uh, the, the teammates were fighting each other so much, one of them being a lap down, and we took advantage to get the race victory and uh, at a crucial time with, you know, obviously having crashed out of the British Grand Prix, all the market madness, this was a moment of chaos in the season, but we focused our head straight and narrow at only one objective and still trying to get back in the championship fight. But the chaos soon settled and soon Yuki Tsunoda emerged as one of the true stars of the season. He got his second race win of the year and he was an overtaking machine. And in their second only race as a driver pairing, the Aston Martin boys secured a 1-2. Zhou Guan Yu seemingly actually becoming a fantastic teammate for Yuki Tsunoda to build with in his chance to try and go for the world champion. Championship. Ferrari would get back on the podium, but for us, it was going to be more glory at the second Italian Grand Prix. Ferrari may have been getting better and may have gotten a race win, but we have taken victory in all the Italian Grand Prix in a retro livery with a retro helmet. We took victory for Lamborghini for the second time on home soil, and this one was pretty important because this would really get us closer to the championship. Fight. At this point, it was really apparent that would be maybe a battle between myself, Poor Chair, and Yuki Tsunoda, with a lot of different other drivers getting occasional podiums, getting in the middle, and you know, being a spanner in the work. But the consistency was there for us three drivers, and that was very apparent in this run because Tsunoda then would go on to win the very next Grand Prix at the Belgium GP. This race, not so great for us, though, myself and Poor Chair having a messy affair, having a a messy Grand Prix, but we still came home to limit the damage to Sonoda, but who was now ha gaining all the momentum in the world and really was maybe the best driver on the entire grid at this point in the season. And Aston Martin were dangerously good with another 1-2. They were gaining on us in the Constructors' Championship. In the face of this potential panic, we came through and rallied as a team as we had a sensational Grand Prix at the Canadian GP. A 1-2 too, but unfortunately bittersweet for me, one of my favourite circuits and we lost out in a direct battle to Teo Porche. Into the final corner, he was able to overtake us and we had to suck up getting second place here and little did I know at the time that this would be deja vu for us because from the start to the season to towards the end of the season, Teo Porche would once again find a bit of form after quite a few races of mistakes a bit of inexperience being knocked out in Q2, getting stuck in traffic, not able to show that raw speed we know he has, well, he showed it again as it was another set of back-to-back -back victories from Canada to Mexico. Poor Chair was back in the game. He was back in his swagger as we went on to the final two races of the season. A chaotic Saudi Arabian Grand Prix would see Audi take their second win of the year, and my rivals, Poor Chair and Sonoda, both buckling under pressure with some very flawed pits strategies under a safety car. We got a podium and it was the wrong Aston Martin also on the third step and that leaves us in a very, very good position going into the Brazilian Grand Prix. We've already wrapped up the Constructors' Championship. I mean, it felt inevitable towards the end with Paul Chair getting those two wins and as a team, we're obviously 1-2 in the Championship so of course we're going to get that victory eventually but there was a there was a while for, for a moment I thought Aston Martin really could come at us, you know, 344 points well ahead of Audi, um, you know, so they have been a very strong pairing, but the last race was a real swing in our favour as we remained consistent with two third places, poor chair, only managed P6 with a car issue, and Sonoda, well, of course, he had a the biggest blunder out of the two of them with the safety car period, both of them did, but, you know, Sonoda pits 
literally as the safety car came in. Um, a shocking decision. Maybe the pressure got to him. He's never been in this position before fighting for a world championship. So maybe it just all got to him. But yeah, he lost out a lot there. So really, well and truly, going into this final race, mathematically, yes, it's a three-way fight. But I'm really just focused on our teammate, Porcher. It really seems like the vibe is going to be myself versus Teo Porcher. Which means for the very first time in this series, we are fighting our teammates for the Drivers' World Championship. And to add some little bit of spice to this finale, there is some rain here in Sao Paulo. The Brazilian Grand Prix, it always chucks up drama and it always can chuck up some bad weather. It is raining here on Friday for qualifying as this is a sprint round. So we have two races in this episode to contest. We've got the sprint on Saturday and then the full Grand Prix on Sunday. Right now we're on intermediate, but I think the sprint's going to be dry and the full race, there's maybe a chance of rain, but we're going to have to see. So we've set the car up for dry conditions. We went out for some consecutive laps. So we've managed to bag P1. Sonoda's up there though, so showing that he's not, you know, getting too disheartened by what happened in Jeddah as he's right up there with Joe Guan Yu as well. Taylor Porcher P9, but we know how good the car has been, you know, ever since we made that final engine upgrade the power has been there in the back of the car and that's going to help up this hill absolutely in, in race conditions here in qualifying as well as it starts to get a lot lighter there's no actual active rain right now the tracks is still damp so right now we're on intermediates and we go quickest of all again because I waited for it to get drier uh, it didn't matter in the end because it actually got literally to full dries right at the death of qualifying so we're down in p15 now we're in the drop zone this is it this is our one and only lap to get into the top 10 it's a little bit of understeer and then oversteer through the final two corners it's a little bit damp the track is very green the rubber has been washed away we're up three seconds on our intermediate lap time but will that be enough thankfully we can breathe a sigh of relief it is going to be enough i was very worried there though because time and time again when it goes from wet to dry my word I can never perform well versus the AI sometimes, but thankfully when it matters here in the finale, we have done myself, Porcher and Sonoda in the top 10 shootout here. That will set the grid for tomorrow's sprint race on Saturday. But, you know, tricky situation here now that it's bone dry. We, we haven't done any running on, on a track this dry the entire weekend so far. So this is a stab into the unknown and the pace was lacking a bit for me, I must say, in the first stint. It was only P6 when we set the lap time, and now all of a sudden we're down in 10th place. We've gone purple in the middle sector, but we go wide there, understeering at that corner consistently every lap there. We need to solve that for the race. Uh, otherwise, we are going to have issues on this run up the hill uh, when we're trying to make overtakes. But it's only two and a bit tenths gained, and it's only going to be P7. I mean, it's my lucky number, P7 grid slot, so hoping that brings us luck. But surprise, surprise, shock horror, Teo Porcher, he's a speed demon. You know, we, we've said his, his weaknesses, I think, are when he's in traffic or when there's, you know, a bit of under pressure. You know, he makes a mistake. But when he's got all the conditions perfect and you just let him drive, I genuinely think I can't beat him like toe-to-toe -to -toe for Raw's pace. He gets another pole position. Sonoda, you know, to be fair, for, for how he's qualified this season, that's actually a pretty good qualifying for Sonoda. So mathematically, he's still within a chance. He's going to want to do very well in the sprint to give him the best opportunity to actually maybe have a chance of winning the title in the full Grand Prix on Sunday. But that sprint comes first, and I'm hoping we can turn the tide from P7 and go forwards. As we're now going to get straight into it as we go to five red lights. The sprint here in Sao Paulo is underway. Lights out. It's a slow start for Sainz and Sonoda as well as we have to make some avoiding moves. But Leclerc's hit us. Leclerc. Oh no. The Mercedes has broken our floor. We had to take avoiding action because Sonoda bogged down. Then Russell bogged down and compared to me. I got basically a good, I, I got too good of a start. And I had to try and avoid cars that I was, you know, barreling towards. And I just did not clock Leclerc in the mirrors. We've lost the back end now because we're going to have no mid-apex sense of balance with barge board and floor damage to that level. Leclerc, 
It's not even his fault. I, I lamented his name so many times, but it's not even his fault. It's really just me not seeing him because I was going for that space that he was in because I was trying to avoid contact with the Ferrari ahead of me, other cars as well. I was too laser focused on what was ahead of me rather than Leclerc on the side of me. And it's a real unfortunate uh, incident, to be honest, because... Yeah, all the cars bogging down basically just got me a bit too on alert to move across to the left, but just did not check the mirrors, so I can't really blame anyone but myself, but Leclerc now with front wing damage, he's held up Max Verstappen, he overtook us in uh, in Sector 1, but we've now managed to re-overtake the Dutchman and Leclerc in one foul swoop, we're up to P7, and from here, well, what can we do in a 12 lap sprint, we can't make a pit stop to even change this damage anyway even if it was a full Grand Prix so I'm actually quite thankful it's happened in the sprint at least but this is awful for us because now we've just got to try and soldier on for 12 laps and minimum we're gonna hope to finish where we are right now p7 i guess and limit the damage as it's three wide into turn one behind us though some incredible fighting going on between gasly Dragovic, and verstappen it's the audi with the double overtake on verstappen and Dragovic. he gets up into p8 verstappen p9 Dragovic and fittipaldi snapping at the heels of the ferrari as we see at the top end sonoda trying to overtake valtteri bottas for p5 joe Brand new has had a stonking getaway and is up to P2 now. He just overtook Carlos Sainz. Our teammate, though, unfortunately, leads the way in this sprint and that will be gaining him a lot of points. But Sonoda, we know this season he's been so good at overtakes and eventually he is going to go for that move on Valtteri Bottas to get up into P5 and he's surely got to set his sights on where his teammate is, basically, P2. And speaking of his teammate, oh, no! Oh, what, what, what's going on here? Joe Guan Yu! What a man! What a man! Shock here! Joe Guan Yu, once again, like in Jeddah, he's the wrong Aston Martin performing at the best of the two of them. He's leading the race. Sonoda will be ruining this. He's already seen Joe Guan Yu get a podium in Jeddah where he should have been for the championship fight. And now he's probably got in his ear, his team radio, that his teammate's now leading the race. At least that's kind of confidence for him to know the Aston Martin can get up into P1 in this race. And meanwhile, Teo Porcher and my Myself are getting attacked by Audis respectively. Gasly gives us a little love tap into turn one. Really not, not needed. We already made some contact in Jeddah, remember? And it seems like uh, some time ago now since that massive blow up controversial crash at Silverstone. I really wanted to send it there, but I just knew I didn't have the car with the damage we've got on the floor. And instead we actually have to wrestle the car just to stay ahead of Verstappen. And that's unfortunate. Gasly's overtaken, it's fair and square. And I can't come back at him. He's got too much pace. The Audis have both got too much pace because science is up to second. Poor chair, all of a sudden is on the back foot and he's going backwards in this race. He's down to P3, it's gonna be P4. Has he got another car issue, I wonder? Because he, he had a, a mechanical issue in Jeddah that slowed him down. And this is the only explanation I've got is he's, he's got another mecha mechanical issue or maybe he's got a bit of front wing damage. It doesn't look like it though, as now Yuki Sonoda is attacking him. Sonoda is going to get up into P4 here potentially. No, Porsche defends well and is defiant to at least keep the P4. But the top three positions have run away with it. It's Joe Guan Yu from Sainz, Russell. Then there's a big gap to Porsche here, who is just trying to hang on to P4. But Yuki Sonoda gets through for that place. And uh, that, that, well, Porsche now is down to P7. He's literally ahead of us on track, five seconds ahead, but just the car ahead of us. So he has definitely got some sort of car issue. Is uh, Obviously, we are still working with our physical car issue of the floor being broken as we go defensive on this happen. And now Mick Schumacher is looking to attack us here. Schumacher will probably be quite happy with that in the Williams car, you know, having left Ferrari mid-season. He's got ahead of his old teammate Verstappen there. Once again, Schumacher showing he can do some wonderful stuff in that Williams. But look at this then. On lap 10, we've got Joe Guan Yu under pressure and Carlos Sainz probably, you know, absolutely bouncing off the race when he got at Jeddah. He's looking to try and get another race win for the season, this time in the sprint as we're being attacked from left and right. Schumacher on the left, Verstappen on the right. We've gone deep into turn one. We just, just about narrowly managed to re-overtake Mick Schumacher for P8. And I'm desperate, desperate to hold on to P8. 
because at least this is one measly championship point to limit the damage to Sonoda as Verstappen spins it up the hill. It's a howler of a mistake for the Ferrari driver, and that's going to alleviate some pressure, you know, because Schumacher got held up in that. So I'm actually very, very glad that happened because now I can just breathe a little bit and just bring this home for P7. But on the last lap of the Grand Prix, we've got to look at this a bit concerningly because Sonoda is looking to try and overtake his teammate, Joe Guan Yu. On the last lap, Russell, by the way, he's gone P1. We missed when that overtake happened, but Russell's had a fantastic sprint then compared to his teammate uh, leading the way. Joe Guan Yu manages to defend Sonoda. So once again, Joe Guanyu is a little bit too quick for Sonoda's liking, probably, as he has to settle for P3. Paul Cher and myself, P7 and 8. So the biggest winner in that sprint was, was Sonoda. He probably got his wish of, of wanting to gain points on both myself and Paul Cher. He needed it after, the, you know, such a shocking uh, Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. But that's so unlucky for Paul Cher. He had a mechanical issue in the last race and that mechanical issue has come up again here in the sprint so you know there's half a chance it happens in the race which is maybe good news for us as an individual driver you know that's you know if it, it, if it was to come up that's going to help us to no end but now Sonoda is going to start the full Grand Prix in third place I'm going to be down here in P8 and there is you know mathematically now you can see poor chair is two points behind me so he's gained one point on us Sonoda, though, has gained a decent amount where he's only 13 points behind me. There is a scenario where if I didn't gain enough positions from P8 and let's say Sonoda had one of those blinding, you know, overtaking races where he gets into P1, there is a mathematical scenario where Sonoda can actually fully pull an Uno re reverse card and somehow actually win the championship still. So we have to be very vigilant in this race and not count out Sonoda. But we're obviously going to focus also on Paul Chair, who's right next to us and two points off us in the championship. Formula One returns to Interlagos once again with a stage set for what promises to be another classic Sao Paulo Grand Prix. Sebastian Vettel famously clinched his third championship here in 2012, and just four years later, Max Verstappen treated us to one of the finest wet weather drives of all time. Interlagos, always a very special race here in Brazil. It's a 2.7 mile circuit with nine left turns and six right turns for a total of 15 corners. It's a wet one today as well, so grip and visibility will be at a premium and the drivers will need to be careful coming up the hill in sector three, the scene of many an accident over the years. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. George Russell will begin today's event in pole position and Joe Guan Yu completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Sonoda, Bottas, Gasly, Sainz, the owner driver, Fittipaldi, Albon, Mick Schumacher, Oscar Piastri, Liam Lawson, Ocon, Perez, Norris, Ricardo, Magnussen, Verstappen, Leclerc, Drogovic, Sargent, and Theo Porsche. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. Well, it's not going to be plain sailing for our drivers today. Although with the sky falling as it is, perhaps sailing isn't too far from the truth. Anthony Davidson could be a wet one today. Great to have you with us. What are your thoughts? It is a touch damp, isn't it? Well, as a driver, there are three big things to worry about when racing in these kind of conditions. Standing water, tyre temperature and visibility. Judging distance to the cars around you is really tricky when you're driving through the vast amounts of spray that these wet weather Pirelli tyres kick up. Well, it's a major twist in this tale. In the finale episode and going to the final race after the sprint, right, Theo Borcher, our teammate, has taken a set of good penalties for changing engine components Clearly he thinks that he's going to get another mechanical issue in the race if he doesn't. You know, he had one in Jeddah, he had one in the sprint, so he's taken them now. It's really not what you love to see. You know, I'd rather of him not have to do that, but it's the way the cookie crumbles. We took penalties earlier in the season to avoid a penalty in the final race here, and Paul Chair hasn't. Once again, that inexperience maybe has been to his detriment. He maybe should have thought about this 
He maybe should have thought about this earlier in the season. And on top of that, double whammy. It is raining hard here in Sao Paulo. We've got a full wet tyre start here for the final race of the season. And Porcher is on the back row of the grid. So there's a lot of, you know, stress that has been alleviated somewhat, you know, in the fight versus our teammates. But I've still got work to do because from P7, we need to get a few overtakes done in case Sonoda does well. And that's easier said than done in these very difficult conditions. Remember, we've set the car up for dries and it will get to dry, I'm hoping, eventually in this race. But right now, we're on full wet. So this is a very different kettle of fish. We haven't driven the car on heavy fuel or in these conditions at all on this circuit so far. So this is a massive stab into the unknown. And even though Paul Chair is down the order, it still feels very tense in the air here. Just the fact there's so much rain coming down, it just adds so much more of a challenge to this entire race. But here we go then, the final race of season five as we go to five red lights to the Brazilian Grand Prix. This is it. Who's gonna come out the champion? Lights out and we're underway. It's a bit of a shaky start for all of us as we're slipping and sliding, trying to desperately get some grip on the rear tires. Big Gasly comes across us. He's hit us wide. We take it very easy. We're tiptoeing on this runoff area, not wanting to lose the back end and come back onto circuit with some semblance of speed. But we're down to P14 now. We've lost seven positions as Gasly has tapped us wide in the final race. He's not even in the title fight, but Pierre Gasly is still affecting the championship fight for myself and there's absolutely no love lost between ourselves and the Frenchman as we look to try and overtake Mick Schumacher on the inside. Oh, there's so much spray. There's so much water. This is going to be so difficult. I want to try and dive down the inside of Sergio Perez and the Andretti, but we just don't have enough pace and I've got damage. Oh no, I've got damage. I think I've got damage. Yep, front wing damage. Absolutely wonderful stuff. Gasly has actually hit us so hard by tapping us there that we've got front wing damage, but it's still not going to stop us from dancing the car round the outside of the slowest car on the grid, the Andretti Cadillac of Sergio Perez. But um, oh, that's frustrating. That's very frustrating. We're definitely not going to have the performance we need to recover. And we're going to have to wait till the, the first pit stop when whenever that comes to make a front wing change because we can't pit now. We have to carry on with just this level of damage and carry on we will as we're going to absolutely send it. And it's a drift and a half as the rears lock up. What a drift. We drift. You know what that was? That was a drift of a man desperate to catch up the order, you know, because we're out the points right now. As it stands, Sonoda would win the championship if he was to go on to finish the race where he is, I think in the top four at least, and that's all he needs. He's 13 points behind us, remember. So a top four is all he needs if I'm scoring no points, but on the onboard of Gasly, doesn't even look like he understood what he did, but from my onboard, you can see clearly what he did. He probably didn't even know I was there, so I can't actually put him at fault too much, but it's just too coincidental. Look at this. I'm going in a straight line. And of course, he moves right into the very space I'm trying to go into. Yes, there's water. Probably you can't even see me in the mirrors. But um, it just it happens too much for it not to be coincidence with Pierre Gasly every single time, man. So we're outside the point. And based off the timing ladder I saw on lap one, Sonoda's up to second place. So as it stands... Yuki Tsunoda is actually in a position to win this championship. Both myself and Paul Chair down and out the points right now. Paul Chair at the back of the grid. I'm in the middle of the grid trying to desperately get back into the points here as we are struggling to make the move on the very man we fought for the world championship last season. It was myself versus Liam Lawson last season and uh, you know, somewhat poetic really that we're having to fight him to get up into P10 to, to get back in the points and start this damage limitation. Oh god, we'll lose the back end. These conditions are so tough, let alone with a bit of front wing damage. We caught up to Piastri, but we make a mistake there and we lose time. We have to go again and we re-catch up to him by the end of that five. But uh, surprise, surprise, once again at this same corner, the rear end, 
Drake steps out. It's so difficult out there. Russell leads the way in the Ferrari. 3.3 seconds ahead of Sonoda. He is in second place. As it stands, he would be scoring 18 points. I would be scoring one. And he would win the World Championship. Poor Chair, bless him, he's down in P21. Even worse race for him is he's taking those penalties. And in these conditions, he's finding it tough here. So this is going to be a real miracle work for Poor Chair to get back into the championship at all as we are trying to alter it feels like we're doing our own miracle work trying to overtake these cars because with the damage I've got I don't feel too quick as uh, the rear end keeps locking as well as these conditions are just very tough full wets you know there's so much standing water but we've managed to just just about get around the outside of Oscar Piastri another man that we have fought in the past for the world championship this is like a like a, a farewell tour almost uh, you know at, uh, rivals we fought before Lawson last season Piastri was it you know in season two or three I can't remember now um yeah fighting all our old protagonists but uh, poor chair down in P21 on lap six here he's not going anywhere anytime soon he's going to be praying for intermediates and and probably more so the dry tires to really start getting a move on but what did we say earlier in the video you know we've we've seen it there's evidence in this season poor chair struggles a bit in the traffic you know when he's in clean air or he's only got one or two cars he's so you know so quick so fast but when he's got so many cars to overtake he loses a bit of that speed and he's in the pits now. He's in the pits. He's coming in. There's another car in. And I wonder if this is a roll of the dice on behalf of Porsche and Sergio Perez there as uh, they might look to go on to intermediates. The rain looks to have let up a little bit. Still looks pretty damn wet out there. But, you know, most of the time the AI actually know a lot more than me because obviously they're just perfect computers. Porsche comes in and he is on inters. He is on inters. And by the time we get through to the last few corners on lap seven, we are really struggling to keep the car in a straight line. And the track looks a bit drier, just a little bit. And it is time to come in for intermediate. So Porsche has thrown the dice and I think it might, might work out for him. So we're P9 at the moment. We're going to come in. But remember, we're going to change our front wing. We have to. There is no way I'm letting the team you know, keep me out there with that broken wing. So I've made sure to set on the heads-up display, yes, to changing the front wing if there's damage. I'm not going to leave it up to them to decide like we've done before in the past because I absolutely want a fully working car just so, you know, let's say in case we don't make up the positions we need to win the championship, I know in my heart that there was not a car problem slowing us down. So that's my that's my logic, and I'd rather have a, a, a you know an intact car for the dry period if and when it comes. As we're on to intermediates, we're down to P11 though, because obviously you lose time changing that front wing. So we have to re-overtake the likes of Lawson, Piastri, Perez even, and maybe even Teo Porche. Look at this as we come out the pit. Oh my word, we're side by side, wheel to wheel unbelievable moment in this race that that is poetry in motion there we come out the pits and we're literally side by side with board chair for the first time really in this entire race weekend as we went into this grand prix three points apart we're now two points apart in uh, in the standings but uh, we do stay ahead of him because in these conditions i am actually going quite well. Poor Chair is not looking as quick as he usually is and he's half a second behind me still on the very next lap. So right now we've got the measure of him but uh, we need to move forward. He needs to move forward to be fair and from here, if you know, annoyingly because he's behind me, he could try and follow me through these overtakes and that will be really annoying for me as both of us are just outside the top 10. Both of us have to get in the points but there's a red flag. There's a red flag. This finale has everything. Engine penalties. Old rivals hitting me off. Red flag. The moment we had with Paul Chair. Unbelievable. And it's a red flag for good reason. Because there's a huge crash at turn one. As the Haas of Dragovic spins it again in this career series. It's a four car pile up there. So uh, yeah, I can't even blame the FI. That definitely needed a red flag in intermediate conditions. But um. 
this red flag then has actually fast forwarded the dry period. So we're going to completely skip intermediates now and we're probably going to restart the race on dries it seems because that's the only choice I can make. And with the laps to go, 25, for me it's a no-brainer. We've got to go hard tyres. We know the car also works well on hards. But also over 25 laps, even if the mediums start off the better tyre, by the end of the race, surely they're going to wear out. So for me, absolutely, it's time to go to the hard compound tyre. But loads of people have chosen mediums as we get going for the second time to fire red lights here in San Paolo. This time it's very dry and we're not going to make the same mistake twice. We're going to look in our mirrors, go to the left and overtake quite a few cars there. But back down the inside goes Pierre Gasly once again. Gasly is thwarting us and getting in the middle of our title fight with Sonoda as he re overtakes me. We're down to P8. Sonoda, where is it? Oh my god, no. No, 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 no. Yuki Sonoda, stop that. He's in P1. Oh my god. You can't see me right now. I've got my hands behind my head. Oh no. Oh no. Sonoda's in the lead. We're up to P8. But now things get very tricky. Look at the gap he's got in the minimap. Oh, God. Oh, he's cooking. He's absolutely cooking. He's cooking like he's got that restaurant he's always wanted. This is unbelievable. So if he gets 25 points, I'm trying to do the maths here. I think we have to get something like P4 to make sure we win the championship. Is all. <laughs> Alexander Albon goes for the overtake. I think he grazed our front wing. Thankfully, there's no damage. Okay, I thought there was some damage there. The, the, the McLaren came, us, uh, came at us at a rate of not. Meanwhile, we're losing pace to Gasly. We're one second away from him because right now, everyone's medium tyres are much quicker than my hards. So right now, I don't have the pace to catch up. I, I'm playing the long game. I'm hoping by eventually lap 20, we have the better race tyre. But Gasly, has gone and overtaken Fittipaldi for P6, but all these cars, oh god, we're going to have to overtake. Sonoda's just set the fast up for the Grand Prix. So he has got, at the moment, he's got a massive lead for P1, and he's also got a fastest lap as we go for the overtake on Fittipaldi. Little bit of an argy-bargy moment through the Senna S, but we are up into P7, but Sonoda leads by Five seconds and has a fast after the Grand Prix. It's three wide for P2 though. Look at what a fight we've got here in the finale. Russell, the Joe, the Saints, and Gasly is now overtaking Valtteri Bottas. These guys are fighting so hard though. Thankfully, thankfully, my prayers are being answered. They're fighting so much that now almost immediately we're on the back of Valtteri Bottas. And with Sonoda getting a win and a fast after the Grand Prix. We need to get third. Not even fourth place will be good enough. So we absolutely have to make positions. But we make a mistake. We make a howler of a mistake into turn one. We got way too confident on the curbs. And we lose the back end. It's all kicking off in the finale. The pressure. It's getting to poor chair. It, it, it's gone to me now. Oh, God. That was a really... That was a tough mistake. That was a tough mistake. That's a mistake that I just can't be making in a finale like this if I want to win this championship, especially with the task at hand. And, ah, oh, I make a desperate dive and lunge to overtake Albon. It's not working. Why do I feel like Fernando Alonso in 2010 where he's making these dive bombs trying to make overtakes? That can't happen. Thankfully, we do make this one happen on Albon. But, yeah, confirmation. If Sonoda goes on to win this race and keeps the boss up of the Grand Prix... We have to get to P3. P4 will score us 12 points. That's not enough. That's not enough because Sonoda is scoring 26 with a win and fastest lap. So we have to, in this position right now, get P3. The podium will get us the championship. Nothing less. The pressure's on. And unlike poor chair, I'm determined not to buckle. It's a massive dive bomb from so far back on Fittipaldi to re-overtake the man we had already gotten. So that's our mistake taken care of. So we're back to P7. But now we've got to overtake these cars. We close up to Bottas. It's a send and a half. We're going to catch the Finn napping a little bit. But the Mercedes car is pretty decent. Bottas has been pretty decent this entire weekend. And he's still there as we jockey for position side by side through the final few corners. But up the hill, we're on the outside line. We get the overtake done. P6 has been attained, but now we need to overtake these two. Russell and Joe Guan Yu, P4 and 5. 
Russell, we know he can be a very quick driver. Joe Guan Yu, so quick, he's actually getting onto the back of the Audi cars as Russell defends. Can we get to the inside? The Ferrari's going to pinch us on that same curb we made the mistake on. We're going to cut in for a tighter, quicker exit through the exit of the Centre S. And then, where are we going to go? Russell will stick to the middle. We'll go to the outside to try and go the long way round into the heart of Sector 2. Meanwhile, Joe Guan Yu looking to make an overtake on the Audi. Russell is defending very well. This Ferrari is really holding us up. This is not what we need in this race. But Russell's just a bit too quick. We know the Ferrari in the second half this season has been lightning quick also off the corners. And this is case in point. I, I'm deploying battery this whole time. But with DRS and the exit, the Ferrari gets back down the inside. Oh, <laughs> bit of contact with Russell. Little bit of contact that was as we bang tyres. That could have been nasty. But Russell's pushed us back down to P6. And as the laps go on, we're running out of laps. It's lap 21 now. We've got 15 laps left in this race. We're desperate to get past the Ferrari because I need to get more positions than this as we are finally Finally, going to get down the inside. Russell comes back at us, but we're going to defend the inside line, take move a bit wide, and then get our head down because we're up to P5. We've still got so much work to do. 1.6 seconds. Uh, oh, of course, we've got, to, we've got to overtake Gasly. Of course we do. We've got to overtake Pierre Gasly on our way to P3. Oh, this is going to be... Oh, I'm, I'm nervous now. I'm nervous. DRS open. Where's Gassi going to go? He stays to the inside. We go to the outside. We've broken as late as we can. Gasly, though, is so good through the mid corner. The Audis have been fantastic in the last few episodes. I mean, Sainz just won the last Grand Prix. He's up there in P2 by a mile. And Gasly is holding us up as we... <laughs> Oh my god, what a move. We were inches away from breaking our front wing there. We actually locked the rear as well. We did a Jensen button at Sao Paulo. We drifted and scared Gasly off the apex there to get P4. Oh yeah, yeah, that was that was nerve-wracking. Ga I thought Gasly was going to hold us up for the rest of the race. That would have been my worst nightmare realized. But now we've got an even tougher job actually because Joe Guan Yu, Sonoda's teammate, he's absolutely going to put up a fight for P3 here as oh Max Verstappen! Oh, you beauty, Verstappen! Verstappen set the fast up of the Grand Prix. He he's made a late pit stop to try and I don't know, just get some performance or or, or change his front wing. Whatever the case. Oh, Max Verstappen, I love you. What an amazing man you are. He's taken the fastest lap away from Sonoda, which means he's only scoring 25 points, which means P4 once again is now good enough for us. But I'm not leaving it to chance. I'm not leaving it to chance because Sonoda well could dig deep and find some lap time to get the fast lap back. So we have to overtake Zhou Guan Yu as a bit of insurance policy here for the championship. So can we overtake his teammate? Of course, he's going to put up the biggest fight of his life to try and help his teammate in the championship. Aston Martin have already lost the constructors. This is all they've got to fight for. And obviously, I need to be careful. I want to make this overtake to just get the insurance policy of P3. But whilst doing it, have no funny business. We have to make this a clean overtake as we get the traction up the crest down the hill in the in the middle of sector three. Oh, Joe Guan Yu, a bit slow at the curb. Can we get the exit? We can. Floor the power, battery use involved. We get to the apex just about ahead in P3. But the Aston immediately is on the back of us because he's got DRS now back on us there. And the Chinese driver goes round the outside. He's going to pinch us to the curb. We have to be very careful here as we are neck and neck through the center S. Oh, oh, the rear end steps, the rear end steps. This is getting a little bit nerve wracking, you know, because now... Oh, God. Fittipaldi there is in the background. And Gasly as well. As Joe Guan Yu looks to make this overtake. At this point, I'm thinking, uh, maybe we should just bank on Sonoda not getting the pass after the Grand Prix. Because this is getting very precarious as we get down the inside. We do make the overtake. We've made the overtake. But now Gasly's right there. Fittipaldi's right there. It's now the second last lap of the Grand Prix, and my team have told me I, my engine is slightly worn, so we're going to lose a little bit of power. 
It all comes down to this. The last lap of the Grand Prix. Sonoda doesn't have the fast lap of the Grand Prix. He's not going to get it on this lap, I don't think. So we just need to hold on to at least P4. But we've got P3 right now. But the problem is we've got Zhou Guan Yu leading a train of Gasly, Fittipaldi, um, uh, the Mercedes, I think, as well. Um, so this is a little bit nerve-wracking. Look how quick that Aston Martin is. Thankfully, he didn't get any closer to us. He's, uh, you know, within one second, but as Sonoda has crossed the chequered flag, he has done the most he can. He's won the Grand Prix, but Verstappen took the fast lap away from him, but we, it doesn't matter. Either way, we got P3, and we're gonna get this World Champion! Championship. And with that, another year of Formula One draws to a close and a new World Drivers Champion is declared. Another entry and into that prestigious list of the sport's most incredible drivers. Victory today then, but bittersweet emotions I'm sure as the championship slips through their fingers. Even so, what a fantastic final race of the season this was. Tell me Ant, how do they manage to achieve this win? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. A huge, huge effort in this final race. It had everything. Rain, red flag, incidents, off track, crashes fastest laps in jeopardy and mathematics on hand but we've done it we've won the world championship i it would have been amazing if poor chair was in it that's a bit of a shame but you can't control those things in a career mode with ai unfortunately sonoda though i mean he gave us a real good run for the money by winning that grand prix you know we really had to dig deep to get the position necessary um, but wow, what an episode. That was such a, a mad whole episode from quali to the sprint to the full race. Guys, if you have enjoyed this one and season five, then be sure to hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. We will be returning for season six, the final season on F1 23. But uh, we are going to take a little, little break and then we'll be back in a week or so's time with the start of season six. So till then, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.